Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through an introduction to synchronous counters using small scale integration. In other words, we're going to see the individual flip-flops and we're going to learn how to wire flip-flops, flip D and J, K, um, in order to create counters, but they're going to be a little bit different than what we've done so far with asynchronous counters. If you like this video, there's more like it on Kisker Educational videos on YouTube. You can go find videos for this and IED, POE, EDD there. So before we get into synchronous counters, let's do a quick review of asynchronous counters, the ones we've built so far. So note a couple of things that I want to point out. Okay, First of all, that external clock in the bottom left corner. Notice that that signal only goes into the first flip-flop. That's the only flip-flop that the external clock controls. The rest of the flip-flops got their signal from the previous flip-flops output. Whether it was Q or Q naught, that was what determined whether it counted up or down, right? The polarity thing that we've talked about. Um, but what we're doing is we are manipulating the timing of these circuits. So D and JK, we have no, like we're not manipulating that at all. We tie Q naught around a D that creates a divide by two circuit. If it's a JK flip-flop, we're tying both of those inputs high and create putting that into toggle mode. But either way, we're creating a bunch of divide by twos. We're stringing these together, and what we're doing is we're manipulating when the clock hits, and that's how an asynchronous counter works, okay? It's the cue that drives the clock. So, how is a synchronous counter different? Well, first of all, the external clock signal goes to all flip-flops, and of course, if this is a paper-pencil test and you're not able, able to run the circuit to figure out like what's going on, the telltale sign, if you are asked whether it's an asynchronous or synchronous clock, the telltale sign is... Where does the external clock signal go to? Does it go to just the first flip-flop? It's asynchronous. Does it go to all flip-flops? It's synchronous. Those clocks are synchronized. Okay. What that means, though, is that we can't rely on manipulation of the clock timing in order to make the circuit function like we want it to. So if we want this first flip-flop on the left to go 0, 1, 0, 1, and this one to go 0, 0, 1, 1, half the speed, how do I get it when the clock hits at the same time? How do I get this one to go half the speed of the one before it? How do I go get this one to go one-fourth of the speed, right? How do I cut it in half each time when the clocks are synchronized? That's the big question, okay? So they don't function due to manipulation of clock. Synchronous counters, synchronous counters with synchronized clocks function due to manipulation of the D or JK inputs then. That's the only other thing that we can really have an effect on, right? So you'll notice that the first one here is tied high, to just like our last time, but these are not. So look at J and K, and they are tied to different things now. In fact, this JK is tied to this AND gate, okay? These AND gates that you see, the one excuse me, the one that's down here um, doesn't actually limit the count like what we've done in previous circuits. It looks like it's in the same spot, which can be a little bit confusing. That external logic is used to create the actual counter function, okay? So that AND gate's going to be really important. Let's take a look at truth tables, and I think that's going to give you a better understanding of how this actually works, okay? So pay attention, special attention to when an input changes. You'll notice C is just doing its thing, right? C is going 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. In fact, let's go back a slide. Let's take a look at Y, okay? If this is flip-flop C, and this is going 0, 1, 0, 1, well, the clock is driving this, and these are both tied high. In other words, this is always in toggle mode, right? J and K tied high means it's in toggle mode. So this thing is just continually flipping back and forth, okay? But what happens is if we look at when B changes, it always happens after something in particular happens with C. When C is a 1, the next time the clock hits, B flips from a 0 to a 1 here. Okay. The next time C is a 1, B flips from a 1 back to a 0. In fact, we notice that pattern occurs over and over. And in fact, even the last time, what happens is we flip back from 1, 1, 1 to 0, 0, 0. And if we're just looking at B, again, B changes after C is a 1 every single time. Okay, how about A? A changes after both B and C are one. And if we went down and added an extra row to the bottom, after B and C are one again, A changes. And this cycle would just repeat endlessly. In other words, what has to happen is this, no matter how many inputs we have, even if it's a four input flip-flop, X here in this case will only change when Y and Z and W are all one the time before it. Any other situation you see here, and it doesn't even matter which input we look at. Hey, look at Y. 
See why changes from 0 to 1 here? That's because Z and W were both 1 the time before it, okay? If we went down to this bottom row, they would all change because, well, W is going to change automatically, but this is a 1, so Z is going to change. Z and W are 1, so Y is going to change. Y and Z and W are 1, so X is going to change. The next row will be 0, 0, 0, 0, right? Okay? It doesn't matter how many inputs that we have. Okay, even if this is, I don't even count, I don't know what this is, 16 inputs or something like that, okay? If the previous 15 are all ones, then A will change the next time. It will roll upward as it counts, okay? So keep that in mind, and I said a, a really important word over and over again, and that was the word and, okay? If B and C and D and E and F, so on and so forth, if those are all ones, then the, the input will change for A. Okay, or the output will change for A, excuse me. Okay, so let's go back and look at this. Ready? First of all, when we look at a truth table, this is a three flip-flop counter, okay, a three-bit counter. So our truth table has A, B, and C in the bottom right corner, and you'll notice that J and K are both tied high, so therefore it just goes 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, what we need is we need C to put out a 1, and when it does that, then B will change the next time. So what we have, let me get this yellow arrow off real quick. You'll notice that B, the output here for C goes into the inputs of J and K, and J and K are tied together. That means that J and K are either both off, which means no change mode, or they're both on, which means it's in toggle mode. This flip-flop is in toggle mode. So if I want this to toggle, what I do is I say, okay, when that C outputs a 1, then they're both high, which means that we're in toggle mode. And the next time the clock hits, B will change. So in other words, when C is a 1, which I can get from saying, okay, when this Q is a 1, right, I can tie it to Q, C is a 1, next time the clock hits, B changes. C outputs a 1 with its Q output, next time the clock changes. So that's how that works, okay? For A, though, it's a little bit different. What I need is both B and C to output a 1. So what I've done here is I've taken Q output and traced this around with me, and it goes down into this AND gate, okay? The same thing happens with B. B's output comes down here and enters an AND gate. When Q for C and Q for B, notice the word AND, okay? When those both output a 1, this thing will output a 1, this AND gate. 1, 1 for an AND gate gives me a 1. Therefore, J, K, whoops, J and K are both a 1. For in the inputs on A, which means this goes into toggle mode, and it means it changes on the next clock signal, okay? So I just have to add AND gates in. If I had a 4-bit flip-flop, which I should have done for you, I don't know why I didn't put in this PowerPoint, but I would have a 3-input AND gate next time looking for A and B and C to all be 1, and therefore the 4th flip-flop could change the next time, okay? So to wrap this video up, main points of synchronous counters, the external clock runs all of the flip-flops at the same time. One of the nice things, by the way, about that is it means the clocks are synchronized, which means you don't have that ripple effect that we ran into over and over again with asynchronous counters. Synchronous counters are not based on manipulation of the clock. They are based on manipulation of D and JK inputs. One of the downsides is that they're going to require more logic, those AND gates that you saw typically, in order to make them function, because we haven't even added AND gates to do things like limit the count to 0 to 5, okay? That's going to take even more AND gates. So we're going to need to work on that, and that will come in subsequent lessons. Hopefully this video has got you at least a little bit comfortable with the idea of a synchronous counter and why it works the way that it works. In my next video, I'm going to talk about a couple of things, like how do I make a down counter, and then in the video after that, we'll start talking about limiting to like two to five counters, six to three, things like that. Hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask.